Imagine if you had been told something that would impact your eternal soul. The person who told you this vital information had assumed that you already knew the essential background of the knowledge that was given to you, but you did not. Because of that wrong assumption, all your efforts to put that plan into action have been blocked ever since then. That is what it is like if you are reading the New Testament without your Hebrew roots. Messiah Yeshua was born a Jew. He lived as a Jew. He ministered as a Jew to Jews. His teachings cannot be fully understood without their Hebrew root connection. Messiah Yeshua quoted the Tanakh, the Old Testament, nearly 400 times. We are going to journey through the scriptures together to obtain the essential background of those 400 quotes that Messiah Yeshua spoke. Shalom, shalom, shalom. It's the gray bearded guy. He's got the gray and he's got the black. He's getting all old. It's me again for the road to Emmaus. Coming to you live into your television, into your homes. This Jewish guy talking about Yeshua the Messiah. Hi, my name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman from Beth Goim Messianic Congregation located right outside of New York City in America. Today we're going to be doing the third part on our series here on the, the Beatitudes, those bees, those bees, those bumblebees, those how blessed. Okay? Now, we've been going over the Hebrew roots of this understanding and over the past two teachings in this particular area. I do hope that you've been blessed. But now, we're going to look at verse 5 in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 5. How blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are the meek. What does that mean? I'm going to be meek? I thought the strong will take the land. They'll take it by force. They'll take it by sword. We'll, we'll go in. We'll beat those people up. But no. But also, remember, meek does not mean weak. Let's look at the Greek definition that would have been used here. The word in Greek for meek is preos. It means mildness of disposition, gentleness of spirit, and it also means meekness. So what would this mean? How blessed are the mildness in disposition? How blessed are the gentleness in spirit? Now, to be meek means that you have to actually, actually be stronger than other people. You're not going to beat them up in a physical sense, but your convictions, your understanding of Jehovah's Word, God's Word, has to be even stronger than those who just get tossed about by the wind and the world. In the world that we live in, how does this apply today? How, in this world that we live in, our convictions as believers worldwide has to be even stronger than it was in the past. Because now, since the gospel has gone around the globe, the Jewish men took the word of God out to the nations... The Jewish men took the word of Messiah out to the nations. Now, we have to go even deeper. Because now we've fallen even farther away as a, as a world from the Lord's word. So now let's look at ble how blessed are the meek. But let's go to the Hebrew roots. Because once you understand the Hebrew roots, then you will understand what Messiah is saying to those Jewish people. Remember, he wasn't talking to Catholics, he wasn't talking to Baptists or Evangelicals or Pentecostals or non-denominationals. Who was Messiah talking to? Jewish people. Who were all the disciples? Jewish people. Who were all the women that were even part of the group following around? Jewish people. Okay? So you have to come back to what they would have been reading what they would have been studying, what they would have been talking about, what, have been, what would have been brought up in their homes for us to apply it in our lives today. So turn to Numbers. We're going to find out about this meekness. Okay? Numbers chapter 12, verse 
Uh, I'm going to try to read one, verse 1 through 8. It's a lot, but you really need to read it and hear it to understand what meekness is. Miriam and Aaron began criticizing Moshe on the account of the Ethiopian woman he had married. For he had, in fact, married an Ethiopian woman. They said, Is it true that Adonai has spoken only with Moshe? Hasn't he spoken with us too? Adonai said, Adonai heard them. Now this man Moshe was very humble, more so than anyone on earth. Suddenly Adonai told Moshe and Aaron and Miriam, Come out, you three, to the tent of meeting. And the three went out. And the three of them went out. Adonai came down in the column of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent. He summoned Aaron and Miriam and they both went forward. He said, listen to what I say. When there's a prophet among you, I, Adonai, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak with him in a dream, but it isn't that way with my servant Moshe. He is the only one, only one who is faithful in my entire household. With him, I speak face to face and clearly not in riddles. He sees the image of Ananai, so why weren't you afraid to criticize my servant? Look at verse 3. It's going to give you a greater understanding of what Yeshua was talking about in Matthew 5. Now this man Moshe was very humble, more so than anyone on earth. Now let's go back to Matthew 5. How blessed are those who are like Moshe. They will inherit the land. Now it gives you something greater to think about. Blessed are those who are like Moshe, who followed God, who only made one error, who learned the commandments, who followed the commandments. So blessed are those who follow the commandments, walk the path with God. Because where was Moshe? When was his life? He's walking the path with God. They let him out in the column of cloud and the fire at night. So blessed, how blessed are those who are like Moshe, walking with the Lord, following his commandments, getting to the Holy Land. Oh my goodness. How blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. You gotta be like Moshe. You gotta follow the Lord's ways. You can't say we don't need to follow the commandments anymore because then you're not the meek and you won't inherit the land. So if you're doing Sunday worship, did Messiah? And if Paul's telling you something to do di different, well, don't follow Paul because he's not God. Follow Yeshua because he is God. Yeshua is humble. He was humble and riding a donkey in being heralded as king. But then what were they throwing on the road? The Talits. Okay, they were throwing their robes, their clothing on the ground. They didn't have underwear. So if they were to take off their robes, everybody wore dresses. They didn't have pants. Okay? So what were they throwing on the road, on the ground? The robes. But he was meek and humble and riding a donkey in being heralded as king. Amen. The Remnants Call is a part of Beth Goim Messianic Congregation in Fairview, New Jersey, USA. Beth Goim is located right outside of New York City. Beth Goim is a congregation where Jew and Gentile worship Yeshua the Messiah as one people. Following the Route 66 King's Highway, Genesis to Revelation, the only perfect word of Adonai. For more information on this end time ministry and how you can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God, call 973-338-7800. That's 973-338-7800. Or check out our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y. I am dot org or house of the nations dot org. Be with us live on the Lord's Day Shabbat, Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the sounding of the shofar and the word of God in English and Spanish. You can also be with us live Tuesday evening at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Messianic Torah Time Bible Study. It's all free. 
Just click the on-air button. It is that simple. Remember, BethGoyim.org or HouseOfTheNations.org. 973-338-7800. 973-338-7800.